thank him today. Come on, anybody love Jesus in this room? Awesome. 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 Once you grab your Bibles, Luke chapter 10, I, 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 uh, I appreciate y'all setting into that moment just then. And we love to stand and honor God's words. I know you're sitting and standing kind of like Catholic Church right now. But if you don't mind, would you stand on your feet as we, um, as we read God's word together? I, I don't know about you, but sometimes my life can be so crazy. That sometimes a moment like that where I feel like the Holy Spirit is moving. And uh, he can say um, things that I can't even say. Um, and he can speak to you in words that I can't, I can't speak to you in. And I believe that just in those moments, sometimes we've got to just pause and just, just let the Holy Spirit do what he does. So I appreciate the church just leaning into that. And so we're going to be in Luke chapter 10. We're going to open God's word together. And we're going to believe that God is going to speak through his word today. Uh, did anybody show up today to hear from God today? I hope you did. I hope you did. Awesome. Well, Luke chapter 10, we are in this series called Elephant in the Room, and uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes, again, there are some taboo topics in church that we don't talk about. We're going to kind of just tiptoe in this week. Uh, we're going to talk about priorities. I'll tell you about that in just a second, um, but I just believe that these are some things that we got to talk about as a church that the world is very loud about. But this church a lot of times is silent about. So we're going to spend the next eight weeks. I'm asking you for the next seven weeks after today, would you just lean in? Would you come every single week? Would you just kind of say, okay, God, we're going to listen to you. We're going to hear what your word has to say. And uh, just believing that God is going to do some incredible stuff. But I believe if we will get this right today, the rest of the weeks will take care of themselves. Does that make sense? So that's why we're going to start with this. It's the priority, and we're going to work it our way down. But it's in Luke chapter 10. We're going to read a story. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe you haven't. But Luke chapter 10, we're going to be in verse 38. So Luke 10, verse 38. And if you're ready for God's word and you're there, say, I'm ready. If you need a second to find Luke chapter 10, say, hold up. I think we're ready to go. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 says, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha. Somebody shout Martha. Martha. Somebody say Martha, Martha, Martha. Come on, that's, I, I said it in the first service, but it's Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Anybody remember the Brady Bunch? Okay, never mind. That's for the people over the age of 35 in the room, all right? Uh, Martha welcomed him into her home, and her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Watch what happened. But Martha was distracted. Somebody say distracted. Yeah, yeah by the big dinner that she was preparing. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, and I love Jesus' response, My dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all of these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. And so today, uh, I, wanted to title, I wanted to title the message, um, and I don't know that it would have been an appropriate title, I, I, like Get Your Crap Together is kind of what I wanted to uh, title it, but that's not it. We're just going to title it Priorities, People, Priorities, all right? So Priorities, People, Priorities, and uh, we're going to believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us. I'm going to pray a really long prayer, then you can finally have a seat, all right? Jesus, speak to us now. We're listening. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, high five your neighbor, whichever one you like best, and say you look good and sound good at church today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love that. I love that. Well, I am uh, I'm so glad you're at church. And uh, if I've never met you, my name is Dustin. And uh, just really glad that you're here. And uh, just thankful for you. I want to know in the room, is there anybody out there that, uh, uh, that gets a little distracted from time to time? Anybody in the room? All right, I'm just going to tell you today uh, that your boy is ADHD to the max, all right? And so I am I'm one of those guys. I have this kind of energy all the time. And so uh, you can ask my wife, just pray for Allie, all right? Pray for her putting up with me all the time. But how many of us in the room would just be honest and say, not only am I distracted, but I'm also a distracted driver. Dr driver. Anybody in the room would be honest and say, hey, that's me. Come on, raise your hand in the air, wave it around like you just do not care, okay? All right, Park Team, y'all need to make sure you see whose hands are up in the room right now, because they're going to hit somebody on the way into church, right? Uh, I, I, I can agree, and I can actually kind of relate with you if you say that you've been distracted before while driving. Uh, a few years ago, um, I was driving. I, I am a chicken farmer as well, so we have 54,000 chickens, but our, our farms were separated at the time a few years ago. I was driving from one chicken barn to another, and I remember being distracted. It was really early in the morning, and like the sun was barely coming up, and I remember I had a bottle of water, and that bottle of water fell between my feet, and your boy is cruising at 75 miles an hour, 
and I remember bending down in my truck trying to get this bottle of water only to when I realized when I stood back up, or not stood up, uh, but when I raised back up that there was a car in my lane going 45 miles an hour. So how many of y'all know, it's just a pet peeve of mine, like if you're on a four-lane road, like you know what I'm talking about, like on, on Highway 80 or on 641, like somebody's going to pull, I'm in the right lane going this way. Isn't it make you mad when somebody pulls out all the way across traffic and into your lane? Is anybody mad? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's two lanes, bro. Get in that lane. But uh, little did I know, I raise up and he's in my lane. And, uh, you know, I heard all the things growing up. Like, don't, don't, you know, don't get excited. Don't overcorrect. But your boy overcorrected in that moment. And uh, I hit the, the median and I, I tried to come back up on uh, the pavement. And when I did, I flipped my truck three times. And uh, I remember it was a fun ride, y'all. I'm just going to tell you. Like, it was really fun. I would do it again if I knew I wouldn't get hurt, all right? Um, but, like, it was wild. I remember, like, facing the direction that I was going, right? And I remember that happening. Luckily, praise God, I didn't get hurt at all. Uh, I literally climbed out my window, and my father-in-law made it there to me before the cops did because he drove really fast to get to me. So I, I remember that, but I remember how many of us know and would agree that when you drive distracted, it's dangerous. Come on, somebody, right? We agree with that? It is a dangerous place to be. I, I would just suggest to you as well, not only is driving distracted dangerous, I actually believe that when you live your life distracted, it also can become dangerous. That you can live a life that is distracted and ultimately your life is in a, a place that you never really intended for it to be. Right, So I think about this a lot of times, and I, I think right now in our culture and in our world, we have all become distracted. That literally there's an all-out attack on your focus. It's to get you and I to focus on everything else in our life other than the things that should be priority. So I want you to write this down. This is the first thing I want you to write down today. Is this idea that focus determines our direction, and our direction determines our destination. So, so I'm going to say it again. Focus determines our direction, and direction determines our destination. See, listen to me. What happens is, is that there is an all-out attack on your focus, and ultimately that's going to living, that's going to leave you to saying, okay, this thing over here is more of a priority than what really should be priority. And ultimately it's going to affect the direction that you go. And ultimately that direction is going to wind you up in a place that you may have never meant to be. And so maybe if you would look around at your life right now and you say, man, you know what? I'm just not where I thought I would be. I just really don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know what God is doing in my life right now. Maybe it's because you lack focus in the beginning. Because focus determines direction. The direction turns uh, and literally sets where you actually wind up. And so I'm challenging us today. Because I think Satan will do whatever he can do to take your eyes off of your mission and the calling that God has for you and the purpose that God has for you to distract you from what God is actually telling you and wanting to use you to do. But again, I want to tell you though, if you know Jesus, come on, anybody in the room know Jesus, say, whoa! Yeah, there you go, I like that. Oh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, but if you don't know Jesus, uh, just hang out with me for a few minutes. But if you do, let me share something with you. Know that the enemy cannot destroy you, right? Just know that because of Jesus and what he's done on the inside of you, that your salvation is secure based on what Jesus did, not on how well you perform, all right? And that's good news today. But listen to me, and I've said this before. If the enemy cannot destroy you, watch this, he will distract you. So if he cannot destroy you, he will try to distract you. He, he knows that God has ordained every step of the way for you. He knows that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And he does not want you to reach that destination. And the enemy wants to distract you. He wants to steal the moment. He wants to take your eyes off of the things that matter for eternity, that are priority. And he wants you and I to put them on things that do not matter. And I love the warning that Solomon, who's considered the wisest man to ever live, gives us in Proverbs chapter 4. As he's writing this, he says this, and I want you to think about the idea of being distracted and what he's writing against. He's saying this, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Watch what he says, don't lose sight of them. No, 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 let them penetrate deep into your hearts, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. He says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. Watch what he says. Hey, hey, look straight ahead. 
right? Fix your eyes on what lies, uh, what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Come on, don't have spiritual ADHD today, all right? Don't have that. Keep your feet from following evil because I know if that the enemy can't destroy you, he will try to get your eyes fixated and prioritize things that do not matter. Right, I think today in our story that we read at the very beginning, we find this lady who's prioritizing something that's not the best thing, right? And I, how many of us have heard the story of Martha and Mary? Anybody in the room? If you haven't, cool. We read it together, but I'll catch you up a little bit on it. Jesus and the disciples are heading into town, and they go by a friend's house, and they're going to go eat some Chick-fil-A. Come on, somebody, with Martha and Mary and, uh, and uh, their brother, actually, by the name of Lazarus. And the Bible actually tells us that Martha, she was frantically cleaning the house, right? She's freaking out. All the while, Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus, right? And we see Martha. The Bible tells us actually, puts this line in the Bible. The Holy Spirit decided to put it in there. Martha was distracted, right? Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing. Come on, how many of y'all would know? I don't blame Martha, right? Anybody in the room say, you know what, I don't blame that gal. How many of us know if Jesus is coming to your house, sometimes you got your cousins coming to your house, and you are a wreck trying to get it ready. Come on, anybody in the room, you're like, oh, crap, they're coming over. We have got to get this place cleaned up. You know, you're throwing puppies in closets. You're doing whatever you got to do. Like, we got to get this place nice. Everybody's coming over right now. Like, I don't know what's happening. Like, like, like that's happening in our own life. Imagine if it was Jesus. Right, imagine Jesus coming over to your place. And I just got to pause for that. Thank God for people like Martha. Come on, somebody, right? Any Marthas in the room just kind of busy, busy bodies. You know what? You are the people why we eat on time. Come on, right? You are the people why some bills are getting paid and some gifts are getting wrapped, right? I love me some Marthas. But Mary just seems like that one that's over there that don't, uh, doesn't bring anything to the, pl- like to, the, to the party other than plates. Come on, somebody. That's what Mary seems like. Uh, and I, I think about that. Martha, she's just saying, you know what, I ain't having this. So the Bible says that she marches up to do Well, I just put that in there. But she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that my lazy, no good, deadbeat sister. Okay, that's just a DMV version right there. I added those five words, right? That was it, Dustin McLean version. Uh, don't, don't you see that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Like, tell her to come help me. But I love Jesus' response. The Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset about all of these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Here's what I want us to see real quick. Martha wasn't doing something bad. Martha wasn't doing something wrong. Martha was doing something good, but it wasn't the best. Right? It wasn't priority. It wasn't top of the list. And I want you to write this down. Just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's a God thing, right? Just because it's a good thing doesn't mean it's a God thing. So I'm going to challenge some of us in our priorities today because I think there are some good things that have taken some precedent in our life that may not be God things, right? I'm going to challenge some of us today because there's some good things like ball tournaments every single weekend or like job deadlines, Or like social events with our friends. Or like making a living. Or or social media and technology. And some of these things are are good things. But if we're honest, sometimes our priorities are so far out of whack. And the good thing actually makes us miss the God thing that's actually right in front of you. And I think so many times what happens is we get so distracted by the good. Just like Martha did. That listen to me. You're missing Jesus right in front of you. You're missing the purpose that God has for you right in front of you. And it's because your priorities are out of whack. It's because your priorities are not right. And I'm just going to uh, challenge some of us today. Sometimes what we see as an opportunity, God may very well see as a distraction to us accomplishing the purpose and doing the very thing that he created us to do. And if I can be honest, can I be honest today in church? I'm going to let you know, sometimes that can happen in church. That sometimes it can happen right here every single week. And again, I think we, we again, we want to do things excellently. Excellence is our ordinary. It's one of our core values as a church. But I'm just going to tell you that sometimes the lights and the screen and the haze and the sound, 
right? We can have all of these things, and yet how many times have we walked in this place distracted and li- distracted by the good and ultimately can miss God? Right, so, so I, I'm, I'm not just pointing a finger at you. I want you to know that sometimes it can happen in this place, that we can become so distracted by things that are good things, but they may not be God things. And I'm here to challenge your priorities today, because right now in this world, it is the easiest time to be alive and be distracted. Right, it is so easy, I, and I want to help us kind of correct this tension today, this, this tension of trying to order our priorities That today's fast-paced, demanding, distracting world can easily cause our lives to get out of balance, right? Can we be honest? It's pretty easy to get out of balance with your life and what it looks like. And again, what will happen is, is when your life is out of balance, what it does is it causes more anxiety. It steals your joy. It robs you of your purpose, ultimately making you ineffective for the kingdom. So why do we want to talk about priorities today? Because I think it drives everything else. And if you will put God first, as we just sang a second ago, seek first the kingdom. We'll talk about it in just a second. But but I want to let you know that if we will do that, everything else will line up. The most effective way, I believe, today to approach our priorities, listen to me, is not going to be me encouraging you with a self-help talk today. Right? I don't want to give you some like just pep talk say, okay, now you need to go out to Marshall's today and you need to buy a new 2025 planner and it's going to help your life. Right? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to tell you about the latest app to download in order to time management your life a little bit better. No, no, no. I, I want to give us today some principles that if you will apply, I believe it will change your priorities. So the principle, I'm not going to give you a list of things to do. I'm going to give you principles to live by. Can we handle that today? I want to tell you that because, again, it's not going to be based on what the ways of the world are, but instead, of the word, instead based on what the Word of God has to say. And I'm here to challenge us, including myself, because I believe if we'll get this right, we'll get our life back, <laughs> that you'll recover your life. And if you can learn how to prioritize God's way, not the world's way, I, I believe if we can make spiritual principles the foundation of our life, Listen, we won't struggle with the issue of priority because the prior, the principles will be our God and we'll stand strong no matter what we face in our life. I believe that to be so true. So are you ready for the principles today? Yeah. Everybody ready for the principles today? Yeah. Okay, number one I want you to write down. Chase purpose over position. Chase purpose over position. <clears throat> I believe one of the best ways... To know how to prioritize your life is to define what your life is all about. That you would chase your purpose over a position. That you have to discover the reason why and the purpose of why you exist. Because again, come on, we live in a world today where everybody is chasing a title. Right? Where everybody is chasing a position. A certain status. But I, but I want what my life, I want to know what my life is all about. And when I actually know what my life is all about... Guess what it does for me? It makes it easier for me to say yes to certain things and no to other things. Right? It makes it easier for me to prioritize in my life. Because what I'm doing is I'm no longer making decisions based on this, con- does this like help me in my, like, like my position? Or does this actually fulfill the purpose that God has for me? Because I only got a few years left. I mean, come on, honestly, we're here, our life is but a vapor. And I'm only here a little while, and I only have a little time left to finish what God has called me and you to do. And I want to be a man of purpose. I, I want to be a, a people, a church of purpose. And so, again, I want to live my life as intentionally as I can towards that purpose. And you can't do that unless you know what your purpose is. You know who I'm reminded of uh, today that we can learn from? All of these principles that applied to their life was Jesus, right? That Jesus lived his life based on the principle of chasing purpose, not position, right? I want you to see something today, again, that Jesus tells us in Luke 19, verse 10. He tells us what his his purpose was. He tells us what his priority was, and he says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. You know what Jesus was saying? He was saying, I'm not here to prioritize your agenda. I'm here for one purpose and one purpose only. See, Jesus priorities, what he did 
They were not chosen by the crowd. They were not chosen by his critics. They were not chosen by his friends. In fact, you take these same friends that we're talking about, Mary and Martha. You go a few chapters down in the Bible, what you'll find is that Lazarus, their brother, has now died, right? So he has died, and Mary and Martha, it's been about four days since he's been dead. And Jesus wasn't anywhere around. And they knew Jesus was a healer. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, they march right up to Jesus and say, Yo, Jesus, if you would have just prioritized our family, like if you would have just been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Right? He would be fine. He'd still be alive. And what I love about Jesus is, again, he didn't let other people set his priorities. What he was saying is, hey, you know what? I am modeling for a life for you that is not stressed, that is not pushed, that is not pulled by the pressures, but actually is chosen to have a priority that's linked, rooted, and grounded in purpose. And just because you demand it does not mean that it becomes a priority of mine. Right? And I think that's something that we can learn from Jesus, that we would chase purpose over position. Listen to me. Uh, and I have this question to ask that's going to help us answer if you're doing this or not. My question is this. If position is your priority, listen to me, your purpose will actually become a casualty. So if all you're doing is spending your life making decisions based on the position that you have or trying to achieve, you will spend your life sacrificing the purpose that God has called for you in your life. And my question will be this. Does your preference take priority over God's purpose? I know it's a little harsh today. I know it's a little bit, again, it's an elephant in the room. And maybe God is pointing out some things in our life that has maybe taken precedent and set on the throne of our life above God. But I'm here to just challenge you today. Would you pursue purpose, not the position? Everybody good? About three and a half of us. Everybody good? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm gonna make sure. So, so I wanna, I wanna challenge you. Would you chase your purpose, not the position? The next thing I wanna tell you about that I believe if you want to get your priorities in line, priorities, people, priorities, is you gotta fixate on the important. Is you gotta fixate on the important. See, I believe so many times what happens, it happens in, our, in my life, it happens in our, even in our church life, that sometimes what we can be so concerned on and fixated on is the urgent and we forget about the important, right? Whatever's right on fire and right in front of us is what gets our attention, and what's around us gets our attention, and we forget the important. So I'm asking us, would we fixate on the important, right? Think back to the story that we read today with Mary and Martha. And Martha is working and Mary is sitting, right? And Martha complains to Jesus and the Lord says to her, Hey, listen, my dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all of the details. But there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. Guess what? She's fixated on the important. She's got her eyes in the right spot. Right? She, she's got her priorities in line. And it's not going to be taken away from her. See, listen to me. Jesus did not blame Martha for being concerned with the household duties. He was only asking her to get her priorities straightened out. Isn't it funny that Martha was trying to be perfect for the perfect one? Right? That Martha was trying to feed the bread of life. <laughs> right? Like, like if she would have just taken a step back and said, okay, oh, whoa, whoa, I got to get my priorities in line. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what Mary's doing. And I'm going to literally not value this over the thing that's more important. Like, I'm not going to value that. Like, I'm going to value what is important over what's the urgent that's right in front of us. And I would just kind of put it in a clause of put first things first, right? That we're going to be people that put first things first. And I would encourage you that there are going to be a lot of options that are going to be vying for your attention today. There's going to be a lot of opportunities vying for your priority things out there, and listen to me, I don't mind some of that stuff at all, but listen to me, if you, if you, we can just say, you know what, I'm going to put the first things first in my life, I'm going to put God first, I'm going to put Allie first, I'm going to put my family first, then I'm going to put y'all first after that, and if there's other stuff in there, well, praise God, I'll do, I'll try some of that other stuff as well, right? Like, I think we got to be willing to say, I'm going to fixate on the important, I'm going to put first things first. And I added this last night, and our team may not have it right now, but I'm going to tell you it's in Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. This is a prayer that I would have for all of us. This is a prayer that I think we should be praying. Teach us to number our days and to recognize how few they are, 
help us to spend them as we should, right? Our prayer should be, God, illuminate what's important. God, would you show me in my life what is the important things? What are the things that need to be at the top of the priority list? And uh, I'll just tell you, again, we need God's wisdom to know what is important versus what is kind of secondary, right? What, what can come second? Jesus himself said it, and we sang a song about it just a few minutes ago. But seek first. Somebody say first. first. Come on, say it with your chest. Say first. first. Yeah, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So first things first. I'm going to fixate on the important. I'm going to seek kingdom things first, right? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to seek righteousness first. And then guess what? Then all that other stuff, it'll take care of itself. It'll be fine. If I will do those things first. Now, I, I want to give you a few of those things. Can I do that to help us practically put some things first in your life? Everybody okay? Everybody all right? I know elephant in the room. We don't want to say nothing out loud. But come on. Okay? Everybody okay if I give you a couple things you put first? Everybody good? Okay. First things first, I think you have to do something if you want to check, make sure your priorities are in line. This is just what I would encourage you to do. It's not necessarily a rule that you have to follow, but I think it will help you a whole lot. And I would say that the first of your day, chase after God. So like as you begin your day, fixate on the important. Right? Like the first thing you do, I want to start my day making sure I'm putting my eyes on something that is going to honor and glorify God. Because how many of us know it's real easy in life to get your phone that's right by your bed and unplug it. If some of you plug yours in, and if you don't plug yours in, Lord, help your soul all night. If you could, you know what I'm saying? Like you show up and I got 17% for the day. That ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? Who's, who are those people? Anybody in the room, like 17% all day, you're good, you're rolling? Got it, Allie McLean, the same way, all right? Um, but, but I'm going to tell you, what, how many of us have fallen into the, 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 the scroll trap, right? Come on, anybody been there? You open your phone, next thing you know, here you are. And you, you laid in bed for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you were on, a, on your phone. Anybody ever been there? Come on. I think we all have been there. But here's what I'm going to tell you today. If you want to really, like, set the priorities in your life, I think it's going to start if you would say, you know what, I'm going to go scriptural before I go digital. Like, I, I'm going to go scriptural. I'm, I'm going to look and say, you know what, God, I'm going to go after you at the first of my day. I'm going to build the foundation of this day. The first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to fixate on the important, I'm going to build a foundation on you. How many of us know the foundations are the most important part of the building? Right? Like, literally, we have to allow God to be the foundation of your life, meaning everything else can be built on top of him. I think it's really good if you would start your day, first of the day, first things first, chasing after God. Because this is what I know. The quality of the structure is dependent on the foundation that it is built upon. And if you will start your day fixating on the important, I believe that the priorities that are coming at you, they're coming from the world, guess what? No, 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 those, those aren't going to be built on top of this foundation. No, 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 I can discern whether, no, that's a good idea, that's not a good idea. The Holy Spirit's working on the inside of me. I've spent time with Him, I've fixated on the important, and the first of my day, I'm chasing after God. Come on, anybody committing to that? Can we just put our hands together and say, you know what? I'm committing at the first of the day to chasing after God. So, so again, fix it on the important. I, I'll just tell you, uh, the next one I would do every single week is like the first of your week, come to church. So come on, high five your neighbors, both of them, and say, you made it. I'm so proud of you. Come on, I'm so proud of you. So I, I would come to church, and then I would do this. I would worship God at church. Like, don't just come. We're going to worship God. Like, did, did, like, I think about it. Did you know we all worship something? Right, come on, college football started this week. Shout out to our racers who went down there and fought like mad against Mizzou. I love those guys. So thankful for them. And listen, yesterday, college football is back. And let me tell y'all, some of y'all worshiping college football. All right? I'll just tell you, my Cowboys play next Sunday. Uh, or next week, not next Sunday. We play next week. Guess what? Sometimes that can turn into worship. Because how many of us know we all worship something? Right, We all worship something. It may be a person. It may be actors. It may be sports stars or celebrities. Or you may worship yourself or your possessions or things or money or cars or clothes or fame or recognition or your body. But here's what worship actually is. It's anything that sits on the throne of your life. 
So if you want to fixate on the important, you want to make sure that your priorities are right, listen, I know everybody is worshiping someone or something, but I'm urging you to begin your week worshiping God and let it set the tone for the rest of your week. I just believe it's a great place to to come and do that, a great place to invite your friends to be a part of. And I believe that if we just say, you know what, hey, there's something about starting my day and even starting my week with other believers. Because I remember what it was like a few years ago with COVID when we couldn't gather together. And I remember what I was missing, man. I remember, man, just this corporate, like, getting together and worshiping God. There is something about it that charges you up to say, hey, when we go out there, now we get to go be the church, right? That's what it'll do for you. I believe we got to fixate on the important. Everybody good? Everybody okay? Uh, uh, the last couple of things and we'll, we'll, we'll be done. First of the month, I'm going to return the tithe back to God. So I'm going to fixate on the important. Now, again, I'm not going to talk about money today, but I am going to tell you the truth. I'm going to put God first in my finances. That God is getting my first. I hope you know that I will say this to you guys because there is like this huge need in our church. No, no, no. I say this because I believe when you can trust, like you can trust God with your eternity, you can trust God with your finances. Right? You can trust him and say, hey God, I, I, I trust you. I trust that I'm going to d- just honor you with my, not only my life, but my, my time, my talent, and my treasure. I'm going to trust you with that, God. And again, I just believe if you will do these things, if you will fixate on the important, I promise you, you'll be so surprised how everything else just kind of just settles into place. Everybody good? Everybody good? Again, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom and all will be added. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All right, now the last thing I want to tell you about today, and we'll land the plane on this, is that again, you want to get your priorities in line? Number one, you got to chase purpose over position. Number two, you got to fixate on the important. Everybody good? Everybody ready for number three? Here's what I'm going to tell you. You got to play the long game. So you got to play the long game. I'll just tell y'all a few weeks ago, I went golfing for like the first time in a long time. And I'll just tell y'all, I stink at golf, all right? You would think, like, you mean, I, I'm, I'm decently athletic, so like I could pick that thing. Uh-uh. Nope. No, no, no. Any golfers in the room? Any golfers in the room? Come on, any wannabe golfers in the room? Okay, all right, I'm with you. I want to be good at golf. But there's this thing about the, uh, the golf is that there's this long game and there's a short game, right? And so the long game is like looking further than just what's right in front of you, right? It's, it's kind of saying, okay, I'm going to have to end up hitting it over here knowing that it's eventually going to get me over there, right? And I got to thinking about it. I think in our life, if there's one thing I could challenge some of us to do, is that our priorities are out of line because we're just fixated on what's right here, right now. How can I do what's best for me right now? How can I do what's best for this? I'm, I'm going to think about the temporary pleasure that's going to bring me. I'm going to think about all these things, and, and our mind is so laser-focused on what's right in front of us, and it may be a good thing. Not all of that is good. It may be a good thing. But is it a God thing? Now, I'm here to challenge some of us, us today that I want to spend my life living, investing, and choosing to be a part of something that will outlive me, right? Like, like I want to play the long game. I want to invest in eternity because this is what I know is I'm never going to miss anything that I invest in eternity, right? It's just so, it's just so wild to think about. I love what Matthew chapter 6 happens to say. It says, don't store up treasures here on earth. And I believe that could be just reset even a little bit. And I'm not trying to change scripture, but I'm wanting to say that that could be said of your time, your talent, your treasure. Don't invest it all in what you see right here, right now. Like, don't invest your life in just what's happening right here on earth. Where the Bible says, where, where moths eat and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. No, no, no. Don't do that. Play the long game. Right? This will help you decide, is this worthwhile doing? Is this, is this making a difference? Like I'm going to store your treasure in heaven where moss and rust cannot destroy. And thieves do not break in and steal. Because wherever your treasure is, there your heart desire will be also. So I'm just going to challenge us today. What you prioritize now matters in eternity. I believe that, for, that all, with all, everything I've got. I want to show it to you. I've got an illustration. I'm going to jump off this platform.
All right. So I want you to think about something really quick. This right here, uh, just, just think is your life, okay? It was very dark. It wasn't dark. It was a great life, okay? 72 years average is what all of us get here on this earth, right? So I want you to think about it for just a second. This right here is your life. I want you to just take a good look at your life. And I want you to just imagine the things that you're doing with these 72 years honestly will affect what happens in eternity. What you do with Jesus in your 72 years affects what happens in eternity. Right? What, what, what you invest in, in, in your 72 years here, I believe that there's going to be dividends paid in eternity. Right? So what I'm trying to hear to just remind you of is these are your 72 years. But I want you to see how long 72 years is. And this ain't even any comparison at all, all right? It's not any, But I want you to see 72 years versus eternity. Can I show you? Okay. Seventy-two years. Here we go. We're still in eternity right now. Come on. Get a workout. Come on. All right. How about slipped and died and went into eternity right there. That would have been awful. That would have been tough. <laughs> All right, I want you to take a good picture, good look. I want you to see it. All right, 72 years, see it? Eternity, see it? I, I think it's going to help us with priorities if we realize, yes, what we do with Jesus affects this. But, but I don't want to just live for this and be done. I don't want to just live and say, okay, this is all I had, I had 72 good years, yeah, he was a good dude, but no, 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 I want something that's going to last for eternity, and I'm trying to challenge us today, would you play the long game, would you invest in eternity, I'm trying to get you and I to realize, to get our eyes on eternity, because eternity is going to be a reward for how you live this life, and it's going to be a, a deterrent of, okay, either I gave my life to Jesus and I said yes to what he was calling me to and I was prioritizing him over everything else, okay, gave my life to Jesus, that's, that's, that's awesome, you get to spend eternity with Jesus, or you can say, you know what, I don't want, I want to live for me, I want to live for my life, I want to live for what makes me happy, and that 72 years is going to be a short snippet of time compared to eternity that you would be apart from God. And I'm here to just tell you today. If you don't know Jesus, would you give your life to him today? If you do know Jesus, I'm challenging you. Would we invest in eternity? Would we invest in things that are going li to live long past us? And I think that's going to help you figure out what you should and shouldn't do. Come on, if we believe that in this place, can we give God five seconds of some praise on a Sunday morning? Awesome. So here's what I'm going to have everybody do. If you don't mind, would you stand to your feet? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes all across this room just for a few minutes? What we have a chance to do now is respond to the invitation of God asking you, hey, what are you going to do with your 72? What are you going to do with a little dash that's in between the day you were born and the day that you end up dying? And I'm just here to tell you that I would hope today that you would give your life to Jesus if you haven't. I'm just telling you that there is a decision that's there in front of you that God has made a way for you and I to know him, to have a relationship with him. And Jesus came and gave his life for us. The Bible tells us that we've all sinned, that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every single one of us, even the guy with a microphone strapped to his face, right? That we've all sinned, we've all messed up. We can't be good enough to earn salvation. We can't be good enough to earn God's love, his forgiveness. No, there had to be something that took punishment for that sin. And his name is Jesus. He came and gave his life for us, lived a perfect life died a death that, that literally satisfied the wrath. That's a big churchy word, but like satisfied the payment that God required. I'm here to tell some people today that that payment was for you and it was for me. And maybe you're here and you've never given your life to him. The Bible is very clear, again, that you can't earn it. You can't, you know, do enough good things. You can't show up to church enough to earn that love that God has for you and forgiveness for you that's available through Jesus. So if you're here and you say, hey, you know what? I need to give my life to him today. The Bible's very clear as well. If you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord 
and you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So everybody's heads bowed and eyes closed in this place. If you say, you know what? I need to give my life to Jesus today. That's you. I, I want you to pray something like this. It doesn't have to be word for word, but I want you to mean it in your heart. Say something like, dear Jesus, would you save me? Would you forgive me? I believe you died on the cross and you gave your life for me. And I put my trust in you today. I believe you saved me for eternity and that you put me up, up on this earth for a purpose. And from this day forward, I'll serve you. You'll be the priority of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Maybe you're here and you said, hey, I just gave my life to Jesus. I just prayed something like that or I prayed it word for word. If that's you, I would just encourage you today that you do not need to, to do this thing called Christianity alone. That the decision that you made, that you had the opportunity to make right then was between you and God. Yes, it's an individual uh, interaction that you had to have with God. But let me tell you something. Christianity is a team sport. So I'm going to ask you on the count of three, if that's you and you said yes to Jesus, you got a room full of people that hooped and hollered earlier that said they knew Jesus. But if that's you, would you say, you know what, I gave my life to Jesus today. On the count of three, would you just raise your hand up above your head? One, two, three. You can raise it up. You can drop it right back down. Anybody else? Say, hey, that's me. Anybody else? Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Awesome. Pastor Damien is going to come up here in just a second. He's going to give you some instruction. If you just raise your hand, I don't want you to walk out of this place just trying to figure it out on your own. We've got a, a next step for you. But come on, Purpose Church, can we lift our heads and can we put our hands together and thank God for salvation being in this room today.